Hi everybody, uh, update on coronavirus. I have a question at the end that's kind of controversial, not really controversial from my standpoint, but uh, I just want to make sure we're all on the same wavelength with terminology so you know what everything means. I kind of reviewed it last time. So the actual coronavirus type that is causing the infection is called SARS-CoV-2. That's the name of the infection. So you can actually have SARS-CoV-2 without being sick. So there are probably a lot of us that have the infection but aren't sick from it. Once you have the, the, the infection and then you get actually sick from it, fever, dry cough generally, and shortness of breath, that is called COVID-19, Coronavirus Disease 2019. The latest terminology now is social distancing, and this is something that we're experiencing firsthand here in Ohio because now all the schools are shut down for the next few weeks. That's the extreme social distancing in school because you don't have any contact with anybody anymore, so the schools are shut down. When we go out in public or we go to work, we're still encouraged to keep our distance socially. So this is kind of my personality in general. But social distancing means now literally, physically staying away from people. And that means at least six feet away from people, especially if they're sick. Because if somebody coughs or sneezes, that infected droplet, if they are sick, can land on you and then you can take and spread it to yourself and your own respiratory system. So the social distancing is just staying away from people. And that especially means don't touch people. Maybe even your own family, you know, if there's a question of being sick. But there shouldn't be handshakes and hugging and kissing. Uh, you shouldn't be sharing things with people, utensils, cups, anything even to the point that you may have to disinfect inanimate objects that you're touching that other people could be touching as well. The second term that people are throwing out now, or a phrase I should say, is called flatten the curve. And that, that curve that refer, they're referring to is a line graph. And during the line graph will go up and down like a mountain. And the steeper the mountain is, that means the faster people are getting infected in a short amount of time. So you do not want a steep mountain curve to the, the line graph. That means this uh, bug is going to spread quickly into a lot of people. The idea is if you can bring that mountain down and turn it more into a low hill, you're, st you still have transmission of the virus, but it's not happening to as many people in as little of time. And the, the whole goal of this is to squelch this rapid transmission because by buying time, we are not going to overwhelm the hospital system, medical personnel, and uh, hopefully work on developing a vaccine for next year. Because this bug, this bug, at least if we can squelch it down a little bit, slow it down, it'll give us more time. We're not going to kill it off. The sun's not going to come and burn it off and the weather is not going to cure us all. It's going to still be here because it doesn't live in the environment, it lives on us. So there'll be another peak next year, but at least we have some time to try and work on it. So right now in Ohio, things are going to start getting worse. People will be getting more infected, people will be getting sicker, and the system will start to get fuller. The bottom line is stay away from sick people and why don't you just stay away from everybody and that way you don't have to worry about it. Uh, Mom asked me, uh, what good can actually come of all this bad stuff? And it is bad stuff. But the, the good that may be coming already from this is the fact that we're very cognizant of our hygiene now, our hand hygiene, that we're aware of sick people and we're not touching people as much. We're cleaning our hands more. So this may not only protect us from the SARS-CoV-2, we may protect, be protecting ourselves from all the viruses right now, which are the worst generally in the winter and early spring. So we may become more healthy as a result of this. Okay, the last question was uh, from someone. She had said, Mike, 
I have a strong faith. I'm still going to go to church. Will I increase my chances of getting an infection if I take the host at the end? In, the, in, the, in some religious uh, churches, you get a piece of bread or a host or a wafer to commemorate the body of Christ before you leave the church. And so I'm not, I, someone had asked me this question last time about communion. It's not my right or business to tell you how to practice your religion. Whatever you do to make yourself a better person is, is your right. So I can't answer that question directly, but I can take that question and objectify it and answer it outside of a religious environment. So I can paraphrase what you're asking me and answer your question objectively from a medical standpoint. And so the question that I hear you asking me is, should I stand in line with 10 people or 50 people or 100 people and wait for someone to reach in a bowl and put something in my, in my mouth or in my hands or on my lips? And those same hands that touch my lips have touched other people's hand or lips or mouth in the same bowl. And the answer is, no, you're... You shouldn't do it. You're increasing your chances of contamination from another person. That's the objective answer to the objective question. Whatever you choose to do is your right. That's the update. Uh, hopefully everybody stays healthy. I'll try and bring you new news as I get it. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.